Hello and welcome everyone. We will just be um, you know, waiting a couple minutes to see if we get um, some more folks and then we'll be starting in a second. Yes, and as we are waiting for everyone, you can um, introduce yourself in the chat, maybe putting your name, your role, and where you're from. So good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to people who are no, not on the East Coast. Um, I am Hannah Chiever, and I'm, I'm a researcher from Washington, DC. And uh, welcome to this presentation, The Journey is a Practice, led by Yasmina Lexinger and Lara Kane. If you want to attend the other presentations, led by Tammy cozy Ponete or Tiffany Beeson, uh, you can access them on the Summit website on the agenda tab. Um, and my colleague Jenna has also placed the link to the chat for your reference, but hopefully you are in the right place because I know that this presentation will be incredibly engaging and um, interesting. So just to uh, review, um, we would love for this session to be as engaging as possible. So please uh, use the chat to communicate with facilitators and other attendees. You can go ahead and introduce yourself um, using the chat. And throughout the session, if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to put them in there. Please select to everyone to, so everyone can see your messages. Uh, use the Q&A to ask questions of facilitators, and we will monitor the Q&A to address your questions and comments during or after the session. Um, and one other, uh, if you would like to actually speak, on the bottom of your, uh, of your Zoom page, there should be a symbol for a raise hand. And if you raise your hand, I can unmute you, and then you can join the conversation directly. As always, closed captioning is available, so you can uh, click on closed caption at the bottom of the screen and then sh uh, show subtitle. So, and as always, we'll post a recording of the session on the Summit website following the event. Uh, Yasmina Luxinger from the National Training and Technical Assistance Center for Child, Youth, and Family Mental Health at the Center for Applied Research Solution provide us all with a great introduction to our work during the panel. So I will pass it along to her without any further delay um, to introduce your co-presenter. Thank you. Good morning again, everyone. Or if you're just joining me, good morning for the first time. Uh, my name is Yasmina, and I am joining you from the ancestral homelands of the Tana Atam and Pipash peoples here in rainy Phoenix, Arizona. I shared a little bit during the introductory session so I'll recap it quick here so I can pass it over to Lara. I am a mental health professional by training, educator by accident that uh, found myself um, working as a mental health professional in a school when I fell in love with the world of education and drank all of the Kool-Aid and then wound up as the director of uh, school safety and social wellness for Arizona Department of Education. Then the pandemic happened and wow, was that stressful. And um, I am so happy to be here um, to share with you uh, the journey of my career to this moment and um, the journey that you can all take in your own practice. And I am so delighted to have Lara join us because she is one of the original collaborators on the product we're going to show you today, as well, I believe, is writing a book about this very topic. Thank you, Yasmina. Um, yeah, hi everyone. So I come at this work from many, many different lenses. I started off as an educator um, in an alternative high school in Washington State for you know 
over age, under credit kiddos that have been pushed out, kicked out of the system. Um, and I did that for over 10 years. And I've also worked at the State Department level. I Back at my homeland of Wisconsin, I was at the uh, right. Department of Education. Um, so I've also had the state level experience in charge of uh, school improvement and also homeless education for the state. And I've worked at nonprofits here in Los Angeles, developing community schools um, in partnership with the school district and doing lots and lots of training as a consultant all over the country on developing uh, trauma-informed school systems. And I really feel like that work especially is like a translator, kind of like, you know, Yasmina's experience. I was the educator then understanding the language of the mental health world and trying really hard to uh, informed by my practice as a teacher to translate that work um, into practice for teachers, especially and for principals. So what you'll see in this product that we're going to explore with you, um, along with all the many, many wonderful people who helped us develop it, is really a um, culmination of a lot of that uh, very varied experience. <laughs> all right. So the journey is the practice. How did it start? It started because we are the National Training and Technical Assistance Center for Child, Youth, and Family Mental Health. And we are a five-year funded grant initiative through SAMHSA. The views represented today may not expressly represent the views of the government. However, who NTAC is and what we offer is pretty cool. So everything that we do is free to the field. We offer peer learning, uh, individual consultation. You might've heard the word product come out of our mouths and sometimes that, that means money, but ours are free. Um, and we are a network of professionals that, that support and serve the education and mental health workforce to improve systems of care outcomes for all. And I think I made it through the yada yadas in record time. However, if you would like to talk with us, learn with us, you can go to our website at ntacmentalhealth.org and you can request free training and technical assistance from me or any one of my colleagues. Thank you, Jenna. So the why and the what. I'm gonna pass this over to Laura real quick, but you may have heard in the opening session when you saw that beautiful picture that we convened a group of experts from across the country who are engaged in, actively engaged in the work of being facilitators, coaches, mentors, um, or trainers engaged in some type of work related to trauma-informed care, PBIS, um, that's positive behavior interventions and support, multi-tiered systems of support, restorative justice, and social emotional learning. Um, as the pandemic took off, we, we realized that there was a lot of interventions and, and support coming for our school communities, so much so that we were trying to pull apart the differences and decide which was best. And without further ado, I'll pass it to Laura to give you yes. a little bit more context and Talk to you about this map. Yeah, as with many great things, it all started with an amazing question, right? Someone asked NTAC, hey, have you ever had a visual or seen a visual or a product or an explanation of how all of these things work together in a holistic way? And the folks at NTAC uh, know, because I've worked with them on and off for the last few years, that this is what I obsess about, right? That my experience, because it has been from so many different lanes has really, um, what I've been driven to try to do is to explain this in that very holistic manner because what I see often in my experience working with schools is that they're all trying to do all of these things often separately, right? You have a restorative justice coordinator, you have your MTSS team, you're doing equity, you're doing, you're doing SEL, you know, you're doing trauma-informed care, but they come at it because of the nature of the way schools are designed and our education system exists, often in uh, silos that don't benefit from, you know, if they really worked together holistically. So anyway, knowing that this is what I spend all my time thinking about, they came to me and said, hey, have you ever seen anything that does this? And I was like, no, but that would be super cool if we did. And they're like, all right, let's do it. So that's how we got started is we, we pulled together between all of their connections and my connections, we pulled together experts from across the country 
from the grassroots to state level to consultants to school practitioners and principals like everybody that we could try to make a really collective diverse um, experienced group of folks to really think through if we were going to try to coach people schools through this work in a holistic way what would be helpful for us what kind of visual would be helpful what kind of um, questions would we need to use you know what do we what do we want what's our vision so that was how we got started and from that we created dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. so what i'd like you all to do in the audience because forever an educator you can't get out of here with some bell work we're going to do a little bit of time time reflection um first we want you to just take out a piece of paper and think about, write down the themes or messages you see repeated, things that stand out to you and why they stand out to you. And your time will start now. And I'll shut off my camera so you don't have to stare at me for two whole minutes. About one minute has passed. So if you're a person who likes to take their time while they type responses, you can begin uh, constructing your response for the chat box using question number two. What stands out to you when you look at this map? All right, and you should just be about wrapping it up in the next 10 seconds. And if you want to start, oh, I, good. Thank you for following instructions. Look at this. Marcy says several paths leading in the same direction. Virginia shared she noticed safety, support, and values. Bethany noticed support systems. Um, Carrie, you saw the obstacles right away. Did you see both of them? The one, there's a hole in the bridge and there are some cracks in the road travelers and obstacles along the journey. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. I'm going to pass it back to you, uh, Lara, to talk about the themes that we saw, Edna. Ooh. Ooh yeah. I, I love doing this because every time we look at this, I see different things. I mean, like I said, this was developed very collaboratively um, based on all of our experiences, you know, trying to lead people through this work. Um, and it's, I, yeah, we'll go through all the different parts of it in, in, in um, individually, but I hope that this image prompts lots of thinking and it will take you a while to kind of process through it. So from that initial discussion, um, there were some themes that the group noticed that led to the development of the coaching question. Yeah, we did. We developed coaching. One of the first questions we had to answer as a group is what is the purpose of this tool, right? Who is this for? What are we developing? And we we decided that we were developing a tool for coaches, facilitators, whether they're school based, right? Someone who um, leads the PD within the school or from outside and that there was different levels at which this could be relevant. It could be relevant at the very specific school level. It could be helpful at the district and it could also be used at the state. Um, and that we wanted to emphasize that regardless of the role people were coming from, you know, whether it was the MTSS team at a school leading this work, right, that 
no matter who was leading this, that it was, there was a desire to lead the work in a very holistic way. And this was true for our group. And this is what we wished for people that wanted to use the tool, right, as well, is to um, practice this, this kind of fluidity across uh, the different contents. Um, what else, Yasmina? I think that from the development of those questions, we, we also realized that we wanted space as practitioners to um, talk about the nitty gritty. I, how many of you in this room, you can use the raise hand function, are practitioners of MTSS? I'm testing all your Zoom knowledge. <laughs> if I can use the hand raise. How many of you practice PBIS? Okay, hey, you got some PBISers in the house. Okay, you can put your hands down. How many of you um, <clears throat> practice social or use a social emotional learning program in your work? Yeah. So we realized that even within our own communities as facilitators, there's some folks that have some real feelings, some real feelings about some of those programs. And that since um, as a form, like, as a former PBIS coach for a, a large district, I've seen all the good that PBIS can do, but I didn't really have a lot of space with colleagues to talk about some of the things that concern me from all the different programs and to figure out how do I, how do I align these programs and practices with my values of equity, with my values and morals. And it was a place that we, that we left. And so, wish. I feel like Vanna White. So we were hungry for more. We're like, yeah. this isn't enough. We need more. We didn't have place to dialogue, to discuss, to debate, and to disagree. Mm -hmm. So hence the name of our course. Yes. Um, so the first name was uh, Connection and Collision Course of Concepts, <laughs> all the Cs, a critical friends group. And we really meant it that way. Because like Yasmina said, there were a lot of strong feelings and we all come from a different perspective. And sometimes we bring that kind of territorial baggage with us, right? Like, because it's part of our identity, it's part of our expertise. It's, it's we feel strongly about the work that we do and, and trying to align it with our values around equity um, sometimes caused a collision, but we wanted to create a supportive space where we could really have that dissonance and have it be safe, right? With a trauma-informed lens and that we could really, chew constructively on these big ideas together with all of our collective knowledge. And that was really the goal of this working group. And um, to that point, I see uh, in the group, Shania, I think, or Shania is a principal. How many times as principals, I see we have um, school counselors in here as well, have we just added one more program and not provided the space right. for folks to discuss, like, how's that program going to work with this one? And, and are we replacing it? And, and oh, so we literally needed a map to guide the way. Yes. Yeah. I was working with a school near me um, on becoming a trauma-informed middle school uh, here in Los Angeles. And the principal all of a sudden became very overwhelmed. And, and he was like, oh, now I have to do MTSS. And he was like, but we're in the middle of doing this. And I was like, take a deep breath because we can do it together. <laughs> like there is a way to do this that it doesn't feel because that's how things come down, right? Oh, you know, uh, I when I was working with another school, they had a, a restorative justice coach placed on their campus with no direction, right? And the principal's like, what do I do with this person? And I don't know how to, you know, these things happen, right? And that's why we kind of had the, the little obstacles um, section down there, right? Sometimes things happen and how do we approach this uh, in this integrative way, fashion is, is hopefully this will be helpful. Yeah. I dropped into the chat box um, a link to the 99.9%. .9 this, is, this is life during 2021. The 99.9% .9 finalized version of this map. <laughs> Official, shiny, you can use to do whatever you want version <clears throat> will be sent to you in your follow-up resources. I'm doing some editing and copy, copy editing on a few questions because this was a living document. So from that original meeting, we workshop the questions. We practice together. We unpack the different elements of this map. And I'm gonna point out a few of them to you. And then we're gonna look at the map again and you might see it a little bit differently. 
So one of the keys to the map are the road parameters. I mean, this is actually Lara's area of expertise, but you'll notice that um, they are lining every single pathway. And what are these things lining the pathways, Lara? Well, of course, we use SAMHSA's six pillars of trauma-informed care, right? Trustworthy and transparency, safety, cultural humility, uh, collaboration, peer support. What am I missing? The six. But we used those as our guide, and that was one of the big first things we had to discuss is how do we, how do we um, use those without making them overbearing or be, or be prescriptive, but use those to kind of guide all the other things that we're doing. And so as we tried to visualize this, that's how we came up with, with the road and the journey um, concept and used so that they are our boundaries, that everything that we're doing, whether it's MTSS or social emotional learning programs, um, knowing that trauma-informed practices aren't prescriptive, how can we visualize them as boundaries, as frameworks, as supports, as guideposts, right? So that's how that came about in our um, illustration. Next. So the, um, one of the other keys that you'll see is the use of nature throughout. You'll see in the clouds that we have um, words like joy, resourcing. We looked at the, the elements of nature um, with, a, with a traditional lens. Originally, we had talked about using rain as one of the obstacles, but in further conversation, there's many, um, there's many tribal nations in Arizona, for example, that view rain as something sacred. And so to use rain in a way that as an obstacle would not have made this map as uh, culturally relevant across the country. The other one I wanna point out um, would be the ancestral resilience. We use tree roots because we know that while some things can be a protective factor, we also know that things like intergenerational trauma can literally change the, the makeup of our DNA. And so we really wanted to use nature to represent um, all facets of that with the North Star being that journey towards equity. And I think the North Star, perfect segue, right? The other thing that we really had to think about in the beginning is if we're truly trying to integrate this work, we have to have a vision. Where are we going? what is the ultimate goal of all of these different initiatives, right? What are we trying to get at with these different kinds of approaches? There has to be some central common core values to these that will help us along this path of integration. And so that's where this North Star came from. We kind of sourced everybody's brain and we were like, what are we trying to build in schools with MTSS, with SEL, with restorative justice? What are we after? What are the, at the, what's at the heart of it for us? And this is, these are the words that kept um, resonating for our group and became our guide that regardless of how we're approaching the work, from what path we're coming, this is really what we're trying to get to. And there's many different roads that lead to this vision. Awesome. Jenna, would you mind advancing three slides? I'm monitoring our time. So this PowerPoint will be available to you but I want you um, to get a chance to look at these coaching questions. So now when you look at this map again, you see just a little bit differently how these things all integrate together. And we were going to talk about the obstacles, which I think are important when we think about the things that we're trying to leave behind, punitive discipline, um, policies that aren't aligned to our values of equity, and most importantly, working in silos. Um, and those, those coaching signposts you see along the road those align with the different types of coaching questions that the group developed for the different levels of leadership. So, swish. You'll see that throughout the map. Swish. There we go. So for state leaders, I'm gonna do this one because it's my former lens. We noticed uh, as a group that, that there were very few coaching and um, training guides that were available specifically for state leaders. One of the reasons is because there's just fewer state leaders than there are mental health workforce. However, when we talk about the goals of a lot of our projects ending in policy change, we have to figure out how to engage our state leaders in meaningful work that is relevant to what they do in their day to day. And as a former public servant, um, figuring out how to be a public servant is really hard. 
is really hard. And there's not a lot of training on that. And because of COVID-19, they have been in chaos. So really guiding our state leaders to understand their role and their contributions in ending bad policies, like we talked about earlier today, in uh, removing harm from historical trauma. And then with district leaders as well. Understanding what, um, I saw this in the chat box earlier, what are our learning outcomes and how am I showing you as a district leader that students and families who are well perform better academically. Students and families who are well perform better academically. Students and families who are well perform better academically. Staff who are well perform, have students that perform better academically. And how are we getting that message across? And then for school leaders, you know, they, again, like really helping them think through what does this mean at their individual building level under their locus of control. So what are the values? Have they, have they done the same kind of um, reflection, group reflection like we did with, with the map, right? What are we, what's our North Star? What are we leading towards? Um, what are the values of our students and families and how do we know that? Um, looking at the school community and where do we share, what do we share in and making it truly collaborative um, with our school community and inclusive. And yeah, supporting the adults in our buildings, that's often left towards the end or forgotten or, you know, given um, some short attention, but not, in, not institutionalized in a good way through the building system since systematically. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think this is just a sample. There was, there are, there are lots of coaching questions to come in the product. I feel like that, I feel like that uh, infomercial guy but we <laughs> There's more. Yay. Um, and what did we create together? What what were our what were our participants leaving feeling that they had done over the course of learning? My favorite, I'll let you um, process these while while we you can let some of your questions flow in in the chat box. This is this is the last slide with content. Um, so you can start typing those questions, but understanding as facilitators, one of the feedback that we got from the group was, we didn't collide enough. <laughs> they wanted to argue more. <laughs> and, and so we decided to call the next iteration of this group dissonance to discovery, because we realized that even the word collision was causing some, was, was maybe inhibiting our own conversation. So we're just trying to be inclusive, to have hard conversations, to do what our our colleague Brian, who couldn't be here because it's the first day of school madness, calls a brave space. I think Renee Brown did it first, but <clears throat> Brian, Brian was really the champion of the brave space for our group. Um, and understanding that as coaches, trainers, and facilitators, we are often siloed within our district or state system or school system, and we need other folks to unpack this difficult and sometimes, not sometimes, very often spiritually, mentally, emotionally challenging work. Well, thank you, Yasmina and Lara. This has been a, a fascinating presentation and of course not enough time to um, really dive deep into these uh, important issues and um, you know, really have engagement with the audience. But as Jenna is um, putting in the chat right now, feel free to reach out to um, Lara and Yasmina if you have any questions. There are resources uh, available on this slide as well. And we have resources um, on the uh, summit website as well. So, oh, just want to review what's next. Um, thank you so much um, to uh, Laura and Yasmina. This has been such an amazing presentation. Um, next, we will actually have a 30 minute break. So, for this break, we have created a 15 minute pre recorded guided meditation session. Um, so to access the session, please follow the link in, uh, that Jenna is putting in the chat. Uh, and it's important to you know, take time for yourself as we discuss these um, heavy issues. Um, following that um, break, we will have a, another concurrent um, set of presentations focusing this time on the action agenda. And during this um, 
session, each one will be aligned to one strategy included in the action agenda. During these sessions, RELAP facilitators will provide more information on the strategy itself, and you will discuss these suggested action strategies with the other participants. What's made it motivating for your own work? What's missing? What can you share about your own experiences with the group? So we encourage you to really review these four overarching strategy areas and select which one you're most interested in devoting time and effort in your own local context. This will be engaging and interactive opportunity to reflect on the work that needs to be done at home, what partnerships and resources you need to mobilize, and what concrete steps you can take to move this work forward. You can access a working draft of the action agenda at this link here. Um, the, during the concurrent session on the action agenda strategies, we will describe the components of the draft agenda and discuss each. The agenda has a common structure shown on this slide. So for each strategy, we describe a high priority need that the CSOC members identified. There are two or more of these for each strategy. Then we will describe the importance or why it matters so much to prioritize actions that address these needs. We then describe priority actions for stakeholder groups, researchers, educators, mental health service providers, and actions for family and community stakeholders to engage with the process. Each high priority need includes critical, critical opportunities to promote equitable dissemination and access to evidence-based resources that should be considered when implementing the actions taken by researchers, education and mental health service providers, community and family stakeholders. You will leave the session with a uh, individualized action plan outlining some next steps that you can take immediately in the medium term and long term to guide this your work moving forward. After these working sessions, we will return as a full group for our last keynote presentation from Joe Rastuccia of the Trauma Learning Policy and Initiative. So you won't want to miss that. So you'll have a brief, you'll have a brief break. Um, right now uh, and then join the concurrent session of your choice in about 30 minutes. Um, and you can access this uh, session from the Summit website or the downloadable PDF version of the agenda, um, which I can put in the chat as well. And as always, if you need help accessing any presentation or help in general, um, please email csoc.relap at sri.com. And thank you all for joining this session. Thank you, everyone. We took a, again. Mm -hmm.